Hey everybody, this is Tyler coming at ya. Today we are going to be making a little folder knife that I can carry every day. I have a bunch of knives, but it doesn't seem like any of the ones that I've made have a little pocket clip on them, so I'm going to make something that was small and kind of inconspicuous just keep in my pocket every day. So to begin with, I was cutting this piece of walnut into a couple little slivers. There was a cool knot on the end that I wanted to have in the knife. First I was going to do each side separately, but I realized that it might be a little bit easier to actually glue everything together first, and then cut it into these little squares. So here I'm going back and gluing a piece of coal wood on top. So here I am trimming it to size. I kind of jumped the gun here. After I trim it off here, I'm actually going to end up taking it back apart. And why I ended up taking it apart was because I thought it might look kind of cool to have a little bit of contrast in between the piece of walnut and coal wood. Up here. I don't know what this veneer is, but I've been using it for a lot of stuff. It has a pretty cool end grain on it. So here we have the top of the scales in the final configuration. Thumb drive for a little bit here, taking them out. Uh, now I gotta section them out like I did before. I got this out Harbor Freight a little while back. I actually really like it. It's one of those uh, Japanese style saws. It cuts on the pole stroke, which is supposed to give it more precision. I don't know, I've actually really enjoyed using it though, especially for a cheap tool. I think it was about 50 or 20 bucks. The other thing I've really been enjoying working with lately is this Red Heart Wood. Uh, it's just absolutely gorgeous after you get some finish on it, in my opinion. You get it. It's a really cool tiger's eye effect. And that, of course, is in addition to just the awesome color of the diversity. I think quite like it in an unstained wood. So next thing we're going to be doing here is putting the two halves of the scales together. It's basically going to the top to the bottom here, give them a little clamp. And for the first time here, you can see the knife blank I'm going to use in between them. So after a little bit of time to dry, what we got to do is get them out of the clamps here and start shaping them into the knife handles. So I'm going to stick it into the vise here and get this uh, little ridge cut off the end. So here you can see a shot of my infallible fashion sense. I decided to wear socks with flip-flops for this particular build. That way you can always ensure that your toes stay extremely warm in the cold workshop in the winter. So with that first triangle piece cut off, we get to go ahead and do it again on the other side of the scale. In all reality, I probably could have buzzed this off quite a bit quicker if I was just taking it over to the belt sander, but I really hate wasting the pieces of this wood. So I'm sure someday, about 20 years from now, I'll actually get to that drawer with all the metal off cuts of wood in it and actually end up making something out of all of it. So then we go over to the belt sander. The issue with these little pieces of wood is that the cuts weren't exactly parallel to the edge, so I had to flatten out all of the pieces once they were clamped and glued together and thoroughly dried. So here I am tracing the pattern of the knife over onto the piece of wood. I decided to do a little bit of shaping because it was, in my mind anyway, a little bit easier to position the knot and the grain on that handle exactly where I wanted it. So again, heading over to the belt sander, which is kind of my weapon of choice for this stuff kind of fun. You can start seeing what the actual scale is going to look like from the back shots here. And with the shape finalized, we can move on over to gluing it up. Just like a paint job on a car, the prep is extremely important to how well the epoxy is going to stick your two pieces of material together. You saw me just hit it with a little bit of heavy grit sandpaper to give it a little extra tooth to bite into. I also will use some lacquer thinner on the knife and the wood. Uh, there is the natural oils that come out of the wood and they actually will make it not adhere quite as well if you leave those. I always end up using a little bit of masking tape on the metal parts that I don't want the epoxy to squeeze out onto. It's a lot easier to just tear that tape off than it is to scrape the epoxy off of the metal. I've had people tell me before that I do this in the wrong order, that I really should be doing both sides of the scale and gluing them together at the same time. I find it a little bit easier to stick one side on, drill through the holes for the locating pins, stick the other side on, and then drill through the opposite direction. It's just a little bit easier for me to manage one piece at a time and put the pins in afterwards. So now it's time to get the other side stuck on here and get it all clamped up. You know, with a five minute epoxy, it only takes five minutes for the stuff to dry, so you can work with this. I really don't find it to be that much of a time hindrance to do two separate glue ups like this. So, after we get this out of the clamps, it's time to go back and, like I was talking about, drill through the locating holes the other direction. Now, I did say this was five minute epoxy, and it does get workable in five minutes, but before you take it over to the belt sander like this, I usually let it dry for at least overnight. It'll continue to get harder and set up. I've had the scales fly off a 
this point when I did try to do it too soon. And the other thing is with the heat, even if it was just wood, it can transfer through and get softened that epoxy up if it hasn't dried for long enough. So originally this folder kit came with little screws that were supposed to keep the scales on. I don't really like using those, but I don't like how they look after they're done. So I found this brass rod that I had sitting around. I did have to find a way to make them not go all the way through or the blade wouldn't close. So my solution was to find a little bit of Baltic birch plywood, cover it in some packing tape so the epoxy wouldn't stick to it very well, and just create a little spacer in there so I would know exactly how far I needed to stick those inside there. Even with the spacer, the pins went a little bit too far through, so I went back up and cleaned them up with a needle file on the inside, just to make sure everything was flush and that it wouldn't scratch the blade accidentally. So the next day after those pins had had time to get the epoxy fully cured around them, I went back and did the final shaping on the belt sander. You can see there's a little bit different belt on there. I use a finer grip for the final one. The belt sander is great for taking out a lot of material quickly and doing all the shaping, but I always end up going over it with a random orbital sander. The belt sander obviously only goes in one direction, so it'll leave a lot of long scratches along whatever direction you're sanding. Even if you go down finding grits, because it's always going in the same direction, it doesn't really seem to create as flat of a surface as if you hit it with a random orbital sander. And of course, in the end, after you put all the power tools down, you always have to go down and re-sand it by hand. I usually go up through the grit site, typically end at about 400 grit when I'm doing a wipe on poly like this. I didn't have the camera around when I was applying the finish on the actual knife. Thankfully, my daughter was demonstrating how to put the wipe on poly on while I was sanding. After I had put on about three or four coats of that wipe on poly, let it dry. The thing I had left to do was to get the belt clip installed on the knife. And after a little bit of fiddling with these tiny torque screws, we were done. In the end, I was really happy with how this project came out. In the shot, I'm trying to show how the tiger's eye effect works on the wood. It's really hard to see through camera. It's uh, quite a bit more pronounced in person. You can kind of get an idea when I rotate it through the light here. Just see how it all shimmers. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed my build video here. I have a couple more things coming out where I'm going to use the same red heart wood. So if you enjoyed, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And keep an eye out here for all the rest of my projects that will be coming out soon. I'd love to hear any comments below, and thank you guys so much for watching my video.